It is my pleasure to invite to the stage Helen Cantwell, who will introduce our first honoree, Mary Beth Hogan. Since Since 2008, Helen has been a litigation partner at Debevoise and Plimpton, and she's had a storied career focusing on white collar criminal defense, regulatory enforcement actions, and internal investigations. Prior to Debevoise, she was at the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, the New York City District Attorney's Office, and she spent a year working in Malaysia with the International Women's Rights Action Watch. Thank you, Helen. I'm so honored to be here today to introduce Mary Beth Hogan. Mary Beth Hogan is a leader in all respects. Clients are drawn to her superb strategic judgment, and she is called upon by our most sophisticated clients for their most important and sensitive matters. And before it was fashionable to do so, she was conducting investigations into all sorts of misconduct, winning praise from clients for her deft and successful strategies. In addition to her own successful practice, she is a leader of Debevoise's thriving and dynamic litigation department. When Debevoise was named Litigation Department of the Year, which I realize is sort of a cheesy honor, but we still appreciated it, that was under Mary Beth's leadership along with many other folks. And we were described as the Army Rangers, a small but elite group that works seamlessly and handles the most challenging cases. That is the epitome of Mary Beth Hogan's leadership, working seamlessly but handling the most challenging cases. Equally important, though, and why we're here today, is that Mary Beth Hogan is somebody who always stands up for what is right and what is good. She attacks all challenges in the same way, whether she is promoting the advancement of women in the law through her work on the Catalyst Board and in countless informal ways, to her tackling of the issue of homelessness and the needs of our most vulnerable citizens through her work with the Naz Nazareth Housing Board, Mary Beth Hogan brings the ultimate energy to paying and non-paying causes alike. In a year where, I'm happy to say for my personal self, that Deborah Voice is celebrating record profitability, I'm equally proud to say that the firm has maintained its legendary commitment to pro bono. In 2017, on average, each lawyer spent over 100 hours on pro bono projects. And that doesn't happen by accident at our firm, both commercial success and dedication to doing the right thing. It happens when leaders like Mary Beth Hogan are in charge. She is also, I must comment in this current atmosphere, a leader, where leader, a leader in an era where leadership, and by that I mean true leadership by women at law firms is astonishingly low, where the numbers of women equity partners have not yet come anywhere close to reaching parity. And everyone in this room can join together and do better on that issue. But for her part, Mary Beth Hogan has mentored and set the bar for countless women leaders of today and tomorrow. Her, sex, her success should really come as no surprise. She started her rocket to the top as a newspaper delivery girl in Cranford, New Jersey. Recognized as an early broad gauge talent, no doubt. What some of you may not know is that she also was and is an amazing runner and athlete. In 1979, she was the girls' champion for the entire state of New Jersey at the mile. I mean, what were you doing in 1979? I can assure you that I was not the fastest at anything. And years later, when I joined Deba Boys, there was a time when I thought to myself, I needed to take up running. I needed to have a level of fitness, frankly. It wasn't I needed to up my fitness game. I needed a fitness level in the first place. Knowing that Mary Beth was a runner, I thought she was just some runner, and not realizing that she was a really fast champion runner, I asked her for some tips, and she graciously decided to start running with me. She was kind, she was gracious, she was, of course, strategic and thoughtful. She would send me running videos to like improve my form. 
and she was very encouraging about my potential for success. Now, I didn't know I was being trained by this state champion. That would have been information I could have used before I started this process. I was slow, I was grouchy, I was not particularly disciplined at first. I was basically your typical client. <laughs> but now, six marathons later, I'm a success story. I've certainly worked hard, um, but I must credit Mary Beth with whipping me into shape, inspiring me, and leading me along the way. She leads by example. She leads without arrogance. She leads because she does the work, she puts in the effort, and she always says what she thinks. I'm so very proud of her today. I'm grateful for her leadership of my firm and for her friendship. Mary Beth, please join me so I can present you with, as my kids said, her awesome award. So I've been told to read this inscription, and since it's clear you have to do what McGregor tells you, I'm going to do it. The New York Lawyers for the Public Interest is proud to present the 2018 Law and Society Award to Mary Beth Hogan in honor of her exceptional leadership and unwavering dedication to equity and inclusion. That was supposed to take two minutes, so we have time to burn now. Uh, thank you, thank you, Helen, for those kind remarks. Uh, Tokyo 2020 is just around the corner. <laughs> so Helen, Helen spoke about leadership, but do you know what it's really like to be in law firm management? It's like walking in the cemetery. There are a lot of people below you, no one's listening. <laughs> it's your joke. <laughs> I want to thank my current and former Debo Voice partners and colleagues who are here today to support Nilpi, Greg Palm, and me. It's particularly special for me that Mary Jo White and Barbara Paul Robinson and John Kiernan are here. Uh, they each have special ties to Nilpi, and they have been to me um, just amazing inspirations, mentors, and good friends, and I'm so grateful for that. I want to congratulate Greg, I can't see you because of the lights, but I think you're there, um, on, on your award today. It's truly an honor to share this day with you, and I'm so excited about the project that Deba Boys and Goldman are going to be doing together. Some family members are here, and they deserve a shout out. They're at this table um, in the center. Uh, first, my fabulous husband, John Kenny. Uh, suffice to say that it was a very, very lucky day 28 years ago in a law school hallway when mutual friends introduced us. Our daughter, Kate, is here. Uh, Kate is a junior in high school. Um, she is an overall force for good, and is she, she is our bulwark, bulwark against an empty nest. Our sons, Hugh and Cormac, are away at school, hopefully attending class right now. Uh, but we are thinking of them. And two of my siblings, Paul and Patty Hogan, are here with their wonderful spouses, Jerry Fitzgerald and Sandy Morehouse. Thank you all for being here. You're the best. So I am the 10th of 11 children. And uh, the importance of that birth order was made clear to me several years ago when one family member, who shall go unnamed, circulated to the family, including to me and my younger sisters, numbers 10 and 11, an article about a new study. And the new study found that the youngest children in large families are, were not as smart as the older children. <laughs> My mother tried to help by reassuring numbers 10 and 11 that she disagreed with the findings. Numbers 1 through 9, however, have not yet weighed in. And um, 
after lunch, if you want to ask numbers five and eight for their views, they're right here at table 19. <laughs> Having so many siblings profoundly formed and shaped me, and it's something I wouldn't trade for anything. But we did experience some economic insecurity. We never lost our home, but the experience of having that insecurity was something that was terrifying to me as a child, and a small echo of that fear remains with me even today. As a lawyer in a successful commercial practice, I'm obviously in a very different place than many of Nilpi's clients, and in a different place than my wonderful parents found themselves with a 13-person household. But I understand at least a little of the fear and feeling of helplessness that so many voiceless and vulnerable people face. That feeling drives my belief in both the value of pro bono and public interest work, and in the duty of those of us in the private bar to engage in that work. That's where NILPI comes in. Partnering with law firms to get representation to those who need it the most is one of NILPI's core missions. A great example is the case Brad H. versus the City of New York. In that case, plaintiffs sued to require the city, when it discharges inmates with mental illnesses, to do so in accordance with the law and to do it properly. NILPI achieved important improvements in the treatment of mentally ill uh, inmates who are a neglected and voiceless group. And they did so through partnership with a team from Debevoys, led by my partner, Chris Tabaz, who's a former Nil NILPI chair and is here today. Building on the learnings and the legal theories from that case, NILPI has now joined forces with a terrific team from Simpson Thatcher, and together they are fighting to secure basic medical care for ICE detainees. There's always been an unmet need for legal services for people who need them the most and who can't afford to pay. And indeed, that's what led to the formation of NILPI back in the 70s. And they have not wanted for business ever since. But NILPI faces an increasingly demanding environment today. In a time when the administration works to eliminate government's protective role in countless areas, and when the belief that it's somehow acceptable to abandon the weakest and the most vulnerable among us is resurgent. NILPI is more vital than ever before. FDR said that the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. This is important. We need to support NILPI beyond today, whether it's through partnering with NILPI and doing pro bono work, supporting others in your firm or companies that are partnering with NILPI, or through financial contributions, or better, better yet, all three. I want to thank McGregor, Smythe, and the truly amazing NILPI team. And I want to thank the entire NILPI board uh, for the amazing work that they do. And finally, I want to thank every one of you for coming here today and being part of what makes this city and this legal community so very special. Thank you.